This week, Boris Johnson turned to the issue of compulsory COVID vaccinations. I don't believe we can keep going indefinitely uh, with uh, uh, non-pharmaceutical uh, interventions. Uh, I mean, restrictions on people's way of life. And I think we're going to need to have a, co a national conversation about the, the way forward. The Prime Minister wants this national conversation because he knows this pandemic isn't over. COVID daily infection rates in Europe are going up. Infection rates in the US are going up. And when we look at deaths and hospitalizations, there's a pattern. We're seeing still a pandemic of the unvaccinated here with more than a thousand deaths a day in the US, almost entirely of unvaccinated individuals. That's the US. It's the same in Germany. It's very difficult to, to get staff motivated to uh, treat patients now in this fourth wave. We are still seeing so many patients that are not vaccinated. Now. And this is where we are with vaccination. In these rich countries, between 60 and 70 percent of the population are fully vaccinated. In Africa, it's less than 8 percent with both doses. And these vaccination rates are a problem three times over. First, even in the richest countries, healthcare systems are still exposed. In some parts of the country, you can only describe it as dramatic. Overfilled intensive care units, severely ill people who have to be flown across Germany to get the care they need. Next, if the developing world is under vaccinated, COVID has a better chance of mutating. You know, every person who's not um, immune to this virus is a, essentially a viral factory. And a viral factory is a variant factory. So we, we just have to get the world immunized. Then there's Omicron. Certain features of Omicron, including its global spread and large number of mutations, suggest it could have a major impact on the course of the pandemic. And when faced with all of this, there's a further problem. Governments have been asking people to get vaccinated and it's not been enough. And we have done 10 months of campaigning of trying to persuade people, but still we have uh, a certain share, nearly one third of the population, which has, is hesitant. The question now is what to do about that? Well, in Austria's case, it's made jabs mandatory from February. And this is the justification. We want to break out of this vicious circle of virus wa waves and discussions about lockdowns. And the only way, the only exit ticket we have is the vaccine. That's Austria, and each country is considering its options. Germany's new chancellor is Olaf Scholz. He says he wants compulsory vaccines. Already in Germany, you can't go to lots of places, including most shops and restaurants, without a jab or being recently recovered. Or there's New York City. Workers in the public and private sector must be jabbed. Here's the mayor's justification. We cannot have shutdowns here in New York City. We've got to keep moving forward. And the answer, as always, is to use the things that work. Vaccination works and vaccine mandates work. But if they work, why is this so controversial? Well, first of all, for some, this is about individual liberty. We are a free country. I think everybody is, you know, um, entitled to their own opinion. If we are going to be mandated to have the vaccine, I think our freedom is being suppressed. But this assessment is not shared by the president of America, Joe Biden. This is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you. Joe Biden is pushing for a nationwide vaccine mandate for private business, but that's being challenged in the courts and Republicans are among the most vocal critics. This is the governor of Alabama tweeting, I'll call the Biden vaccine mandate nonsense what it is, and that is an un-American outrageous overreach. Overreach of government, suppression of freedom, these are two criticisms. And in the UK, the health secretary, Sajid Javid, has other concerns too. I think it's unethical. Uh, and also, I think that at a practical level, uh, having some kind of universal mandate for vaccination doesn't work. We're also seeing resistance to stricter COVID policies on the streets. These are protesters in Austria earlier this month. And while opposition to compulsory vaccines comes in a range of forms, it's worth remembering this isn't a new idea. Back in the 19th century, vaccine mandates were used widely in Europe to tackle smallpox. And right now, many healthcare workers are told they have to get a flu vaccine. Vaccine mandates have saved many lives, but the World Health Organization remains cautious about them. Mandates around vaccination are an absolute last resort and only applicable when 
all other feasible options to improve vaccination uptake have been exhausted. Evidently, some governments believe they've reached that point. Maybe people have too. In Germany, one recent poll found 72% of Germans in favour of compulsory vaccines. 20% were against. But even if governments go ahead, this can only be part of the equation. Because once again, we need to play the famous Dr Tedros phrase. None of us are safe until all of us are safe. And this is where the issue gets even more complicated, because those in the West criticising people who won't get the jab are also benefiting from governments who have prioritised them getting three jabs over some in the world getting any. So yes, the number of unvaccinated people is a major factor in the threat this pandemic poses, but mandating vaccines alone won't address that. There will need to be a fairer distribution of vaccines too.